Hello, hello, and welcome to the Studio I YouTube channel. Welcome. Today I want to talk about habits and especially why you never stick to your habits. Maybe you have heaps of motivation and then you set all these goals and all these habits that go along with it to then just after a couple of weeks, you lose momentum, you lose motivation and eventually you give up or even forget about your habits. If this sounds familiar, I have been there. I totally understand. This was how I was with habits too. Today I want to teach you how I changed my approach to habits. Now I find them way easier to stick to and they actually help me reach my goals instead of it being something that I have to do every single time. So the first point that I learned is that you have to plan for your least productive self. When we are goal setting, we often are very, very motivated to change our lives. And then when those lower energy days come along, you start struggling to keep up with those habits that you set in your high productivity days. To avoid falling off the habits train, it's very important to not set habits that you can't sustain when you're feeling low or when you don't have a lot of time. That's why I always plan for my least productive self. I always plan for the days when I know that I won't be feeling like doing a lot. This way, on the days that I'm very productive, I can do more, but I don't set the bar too high, so it doesn't feel like you're failing. If you set the bar low, you will feel like you're overachieving on the days that you have energy. If you set the bar super high, you're gonna feel like a failure most of the time. So that's why I always plan for my least productive self. A good example for this, for example, is cooking. I want to eat healthy, I want to cook a lot, but I know that I won't have the energy every single day to prepare a homemade healthy meal. So what I do instead is I meal prep on weekends and that way I have ready healthy meals available for me throughout the week, even if I don't have the energy to cook. The second thing I implemented was to stop striving for perfection. When we strive for perfection, it often limits us from taking action altogether. I started seeing done as more important. If you are too rigid with your habits, you will probably give up easier when things don't go as planned. For example, if you assign times to certain things, it's gonna be harder for your brain to stick with that. I think it's always good to assign a moment to a habit, but not a time. For example, if you say every day after work at five, I'm going to go on a run. Now, what do you do if you have to work overtime, when you're in a rush, when life gets in the way? Are you still gonna go on that run? Probably not. So what I do for myself is I set the habit of when I'm done working, I will go on a run. There's no time assigned to that. If I'm done working at three, I will go on my run at three. If it's at seven, I will go on my run at seven. And you can do this with a lot of things. Your morning routine is another very good example of this. A lot of people say, set, set the intention of a very elaborate morning routine, and then they wanna get up at five in the morning to do that. And then when they snooze, they feel like they've already failed. But you can perfectly execute your morning routine even when you woke up late. It might need to be a little shorter because you are low energy that day, coming back to our previous point, but you can still execute it, no problem. What instead of trying to do things perfectly, we just start aiming for getting them done. It doesn't matter how you do something, when you do something, as long as you do them. It doesn't matter how long you run, when you run, it just matters that you show up for the running or whatever other habit that you choose to implement into your life. Just focus on showing up. If you're doing something, you're always doing better than if you're doing nothing. Let that sink in. If you're striving for perfection and you give up, then you're doing nothing and you're worse off than with your imperfect action. So go for the imperfect action. Start showing up. And even for the start showing up, don't expect yourself to show up 100% of the time. Yes, that is our goal, but no, it's not sustainable. 
because life will get in the way. Some mornings you will forget to set your alarm. You will have to rush out the door. That's okay that you miss your morning routine. But the world won't end and you haven't failed your habit. You just have to skip a day. That's it. Be gentle with yourself. Try to aim to show up for your habits 80% of the time. If it takes showing up 80% of the time to stay consistent instead of 100, go with 80%. Even if it takes 50% to stay consistent, go with the 50%. The 50% will always be better than 0%. Show up. That's all you gotta do. It doesn't matter when, it doesn't matter how. Show up. You might also just try to implement habits that aren't the right fit for you. Maybe you are looking at what other people are doing. Maybe you are looking at videos of morning routines and you're thinking to yourself, ah, oh, that person is so successful. I'm gonna implement that into my life. But that's sadly just not how it works. It's not because something is successful for somebody else that it will be successful for you. I wish it was that easy, but it just, isn't. You need to figure out what habits are right for you. You need to figure out what habits make you feel good and then implement those into your life. And yes, you can get inspiration from those morning routine videos or even my videos on my Instagram where I share what I do in a day to reach my goals. That's, that's perfectly possible, but don't copy paste. Take and leave and implement what works for you and maybe you also feel the pressure from around you of things that you should do for example maybe you don't care about journaling but because everybody is journaling you feel like you should journal I'm a huge advocate for journaling and you will see it come back on this channel but if journaling doesn't feel right for you there's no reason you should do it if you hate meditation there is no reason you should do it and yes, there are some things in life that maybe you should do. Like you should look after your health and you should look after your house, your friends, your environment. But there's so many different ways that you can do that. Not because you need to watch after your health that you should go running, for example. I love running, but you might not. You don't have to run, you don't have to journal. You don't have to get up early to have a morning routine. You don't have to be a morning person to be successful. If you work better in the evenings, you should not get up in the morning just because somebody on the internet told you so. Let go of what you think you should do. Even when there are some things that you want to implement that you should do, like I said before, taking care of your health, start with the things you want to do. Habit building is a skill. Habit building is absolutely a skill. So, if you start with the things that you want to do, you'll be more likely to stick with those habits and you'll start creating momentum. You're starting to build the trust that you have in yourself that you can do hard things. You start seeing that you're actually capable of sticking with habits when you want to. If you're just on the beginning of your goal setting and habits setting journey, Start with the things that excite you, with the things that make you happy. Those things will probably also have a greater impact in your life. And that brings me to the point that we need to focus on what makes us thrive instead of what we want to change. If we dive deeper and we put habits into place that make us thrive, we're gonna feel a hundred times better. So instead, of doing the things that you feel like you should do, the things that you want to change about yourself, dig deep, look at what you want to do, look at what makes you thrive and go off those habits. You will stick to them 100% more than when you're just trying to implement the things that society tells you that you should do. And that is something on this channel that I will never ever support. You make your own dreams, you make your own life. And whatever anybody else tells you, you should be doing, throw it out the window. Even my advice, heck, throw it out the window. Do what you wanna do, do what's best for you. And then my last point, a lot of people forget in my opinion, and that is habits should be fun. Life should be fun. 
I fell for that trap for a very, very long time of taking life way too serious. Take a look at your habits. And yes, they are chores in some ways, but make them fun. Look at how you can add joy into your life. Yeah, add, look at how you can make them more enjoyable. Look how you can add joy into the mundane things. If you are too rigid, it will feel like habits are controlling you. Whether you're like you're just checking off a list and not really adding value to your life. Are there ways that you can make what you have to do more fun? For example, I suck at cleaning. I hate cleaning. So I just put on music, I put it in my ears and I make a fun thing out of it. I dance, I sing, I behave like a silly person. But the cleaning gets done and at the end I always feel better and it makes me thrive because my space is clean and I have fun while doing it. So you can try to make things more fun when you don't enjoy them but you can also look for more fun alternatives of certain habits. Like working out is a good example for that. We all know that we probably do should do some form of exercise. But the main forms of exercise you see are yoga, running, and the gym. That is usually the only type of exercise that I see portrayed online. And don't get me wrong, those things are great and those things are easy, but maybe you prefer tennis or football or just going climbing with your friends or going on Do that instead. You don't have to do what other people are doing. So if you find yourself stuck with habits that frustrate you because you're not enjoying them, look for things that you can do differently. Look for things that can replace those habits but still give the same results. And then lastly, if you're someone who struggles with routines, then maybe creating a menu can be nice for you. Exercise. I'm going to go I'm going to go with the exercise example again here. So imagine you want to do more exercise, but going on a run every day, but doing yoga every day, eh, also not there. Going to the gym, oh, eh, every day is also kind of boring. So what do you do? You create a menu and I'll show you my menu here for exercise because I use my own example for exercise here. I can do yoga, I can do, I can go on a run, I can go to the gym, I can go on a walk, whatever I feel like, it's all exercise and I can adapt it to what I prefer in that day and what fits my mood and my energy levels. Menus for energy levels is also really nice, like think about the first point that I made planned for your lowest produ productive self. If you struggle to then do more when you are productive because you don't know what to do, then make a menu. I'm feeling low energy today, so I'm gonna go on a walk. I'm feeling medium energy today, I'm going to the gym or I'm going to do some yoga. I'm feeling high energy today, I'm gonna go on a run. The thing with menus is that you can then just pick and choose and it makes it way more enjoyable for a lot of people. So there you have it. Those are all the changes that I made. And when I started implementing those changes, I started seeing a real progress in my life. And with that, I wanna say that you should never forget that habits and goals should bring value to your life. They should make you move forward. They should make you feel better. And if a habit doesn't do that, then maybe the habit just isn't for you. And it's okay, you can let it go. Not everything is a competition. Not, you don't need to have as many habits in place. Maybe you're content with just one or two and that is totally fine too. It's just about finding peace in your life. My cats are doing such weird things right now. And so if you wanna learn more about self-development and personal growth, please subscribe to this channel. I post a new video every Friday and a new podcast episode every Monday. And if you want more daily updates, you can check out my social channels. I have a TikTok, an Instagram, and a Twitter. And if you want to dive deeper into getting to know yourself, I have a three-month coaching program that I'm starting in the fall. I only have 30 places available because I want to be able to guarantee quality and I want to be able to offer everyone some one-on-one -on -one coaching too. But there we're going to dive deep into who you are and discover what you want in life and how you can create sustainable habits like I explained here in the video to actually move towards those goals that you have and to actually create your dream life. So if that is something that you would be interested in, I have links or a waitlist down below. I would absolutely love to have you in the program. I believe that you have 
all the power within you to create your dream life and i hope to see you there otherwise i'm gonna let you go and i will see you on monday i hope you have a beautiful day and i'll see you next week bye